you, Mr Speaker. And I know you're a keen historian, so I looked up the last time a Prime Minister missed two sessions in a row with other engagements, which was March 1996. And I'm very proud to be filling the boots of Lord John Prescott, but I think it's safe to say he's no Hessel time, Mr Speaker. (laughs) Why is it John Prescott asked that in Tory Britain, tens of thousands of families are facing repossession, negative equity and homelessness. And can he tell us, 27 years later, why I'm having to ask the same question? Deputy Prime Minister. Well, clearly the right or wrong lady did not listen to my previous comments. The Prime Minister is at NATO. Of course, that wouldn't be a problem if she'd had her way. Her old boss wanted to abandon Ukraine, abolish the army and withdraw from NATO and he certainly wouldn't be going to any summit, Mr Speaker. And when it comes comes to house building, I will take no lectures from the party opposite on home ownership. My parents would not have been able to buy their own home if it were not for Margaret Thatcher and the reforms introduced by her government. And this government is building on those with record house building. Jill Arena. Mr Speaker, I think he's taking lessons from the former Prime Minister on telling the facts. The last, <laughs> the last Labour government worked hard to dramatically reduce the number of children in temporary accommodation. Yep. But under the Tories, the number of homeless children has risen by 75%. I'm proud of our record on tackling child poverty. Does the right honourable gentleman feel ashamed of his? Deputy Prime Minister. I'll tell you what this government has done. We have lifted 400,000 children out of child poverty. We have introduced the national living wage, something the party opposite totally failed to do, and increased, increased the national living wage by the largest amount ever, meaning £1,800 for working people and cutting their taxes by doubling the personal allowance. That is the surest way to ensure we lift people out of poverty and would never have happened with the party opposite. Angela Rayner. Mr Speaker, it's like the ghost of Prime Minister Past is still here. And I tell the right honourable gentleman that he should be careful about the stats he used because the Children's Commissioner warned the other Prime Minister about peddling false narrative on child poverty around those figures. The truth is, rising bills and soaring mortgages and plummeting real wages are pushing more and more families to the brink. Those already struggling are being hit hardest by the Tory mortgage bombshell and rising food costs. So can he tell us... How many primary school children have been pushed into poverty since this government took power? Deputy Prime Minister. I would say to the Right Honourable Lady, it is this party, not the party opposite, which extended free school meals to all five, six and seven-year-olds, something the party opposite failed to do, and it sits alongside many measures we are taking to help people with the cost of living. We are paying half of families' energy bills last winter, winter funded by our 75% windfall tax, freezing fuel duty, helping families with childcare, and delivering on our pledge to reduce the debt. It, it may come as a surprise to the Right Honourable Lady, but balancing the books means more than working out how many more millions to take from her union paymasters. Once again, he talks about balancing the books. His party crashed the economy. And he seems to be he seems to be completely oblivious to what it's like for working people in this country at the moment. New research out today shows that 400,000 more primary school aged children are growing up in poverty since his government came to office. Why does he think that is? Deputy Prime Minister. I will take absolutely no lectures whatsoever from the party opposite about how we help children in the most need. 
it is record investment from this government in education, £2 billion more this year, £2 billion next year, which is giving those very children the best possible start in life, ensuring that we have the highest reading standards in the Western world. And I have to say to the, I have to say to the Honourable Lady, listen, her, her leader says he hates tree huggers. They seem very keen on hugging that ma magic money tree. Yeah.